Hope you're glad to be here. Let's start differently if we can. You know, I believe as human beings, but especially children of God, I believe we should stay thankful. But I also believe seasons of thankfulness change. I believe something that you were generally thankful for may not be what you're specifically thankful for in this moment or in this season. Uh, it'd be all right just for a couple minutes uh, to open up. What are you thankful for right now? I believe we're all thankful that we're saved. Yeah. I mean, it's not just those in our church. When you say that, it's like there's there's been a lot going on this week with friends. That, that I've got friends that are heavy on my heart right now. Um, a girl I went to school with, she had her leg amputated from her knee down. Um, so I put on Facebook, well, I'm praying for you, and that, that means something. That, uh, there's a brother that that's there on my heart. I've been praying for him all week. And, uh, and God knows all about that. But each situation that we look at, um, a fellow I work with, he just lost his brother. But then his daughter gave birth to a child. And, and I look at those things, and in, in one side of my mouth, I want to say, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you. But then my heart goes out, well, well I hope your brother was saved. And then the classmate that I had that had her whatever amputation, I can't think about losing a limb, but to think about, well, with God all things are possible. And I, you know, the therapy that someone's going to have to go through and the, and the relearning and just with everything like that, and then we look, I'm thankful that no matter what we do, no matter what we go through, at the end of the day, I can say, well, regardless whether a good day or a bad day, I've not went through this day alone. Sure, amen. Yeah. And uh, I'm thankful for God, but I'm thankful for all that God's blessed me with. I mean, He's He's blessed me with a, a home, a family, a wife, and a love, and a door. And yeah. You can't wait to get home to. Go ahead. And Amen. there's so much when you open up a door and say, you're right now, even as we utter the things that are just on the tip of my mind and just that I can think of right now, the more I speak, the more it comes to me to say, Tommy, there's so much you ought to be thankful for. Yeah. Amen. But it's all because of him. Yes, sir. That I have it all. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. right. That's good. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Tommy, I'm thankful that I have the faith that I have, but I know that God is real. It, it never occurred to me the way I was brought up that people didn't really truly believe that there was a God. And I work with several people that they just don't believe there's a God. And I work my life and say, God help us. And they're like, to make comments that they don't even really believe there's a God. And I was so thankful. 
what you're thankful. What is your thank? In a moment, I'm thankful just for the, the disciples. You know, it's going to be here, but also for the like the true rest I know I'm going to receive just when I walk in the door. I'm looking forward to that ever since Kate reminded me it was Thursday. We got a church at the end. And uh, all the little minor inconveniences I may have ran into just got thinking, I'm going to.
school family and we received so much support and love from churches and community and just very thankful to get to be a small piece of the lives of our youth and specifically our teenage boys at our church. And oh, yeah. It's just, they've just been so heavy on my heart the last few days. I've been so thankful just to get to be a part of our church and our youth ministry and just hopefully be able to be a positive impact in some small way. seated a long time. Why don't we stand together? How about that? What's nuts is in just a few seconds you would have been here for 30 minutes. Has it already been worth the trip? Has it already been worth the trip? Well, where are we at? We're, we're, we're a shade under the halfway point. We're a shade under. Amen. Don't you believe in the power of prayer? Don't you stand in need of the power of prayer? We all do. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we look to you, God. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for being so real. Thank you for being so near. Jesus, so much thankfulness in the house, and we thank you for all of it. Jesus, Jesus, you've never failed us, not one time. And we thank you for that. We thank you for being holy. We thank you for being wonderful. We thank you for being the one true God. Jesus, who we can count on, who we can cling to. Lord Jesus, help us. I thank you for helping us carry our burdens. Thank you for carrying us. But Lord, thank you for helping helping us carry other people. Jesus, we thank you for that. Lord, we, we pray for the safety. We pray for the comfort. We pray for the healing of our loved ones. Lord, as Preacher Tommy said, we pray for the salvation of the lost. Lord, so, so needful. So, so needful. Jesus, please. Father, 
We pray for healing. Jesus, we pray for folks, Miss Rhonda and others going in for surgery soon. Lord, you can restore. You can. We pray for our sick in our church. Lord, Brother Larry's brother, Jesus, we pray. Father, for Bob and Jean, we pray for Miss Naomi. God, there's many. There's many. We pray for James and Faye. We pray for Eli. We, God, there's many we bring to you. Lord, we pray for our youth. Jesus, help us stand with you ahead of us. Help us stand between them and all the fiery darts of the wicked. Jesus, thank you for this night. Thank you for what you've done. Lord, we pray for the Clinton Central or the community. God, help us help each other now. Because every one of us will have our day in the sun and we'll have our day in the dark. And we'll need each other. Lord, we love you. We're counting on you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you would. Look with me tonight, if you would, two places we love to read and keep your Bibles. Uh, <clears throat> I hate to use the term block reading because that sounds boring. To the best of my knowledge, this is the last bull I've got um, concerning forgiveness, teaching forgiveness. 1 Timothy 3 and 3, the last three words are apt to teach. Apt to teach is where we've been. It's where we'll continue to be. Forgiveness um, is such a big, big subject to go over looking at God's grace and God's grace not just being for every sin that we would do but God giving grace for every sin that we could do looking at God's grace saying that Jesus died for every sin that we would do guarantees our failure Jesus knew that we would fail him he did but almost presents the idea that these are guaranteed pitfalls in our life but aren't you thankful that Jesus didn't just go to the cross for every sin that we would? But if you can focus, if you can, if you can grasp every sin that we could do. And, and here's what's so scary about that. I give you some scary thoughts and we'll look in the scripture. I need to stay focused tonight. Got a long way to go. Um, some of us, it's scary what we've done. More of us. It's scary what we've considered. <clears throat> All of us are not above anything. Can we agree there? Well, Chase, I, 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 there's no way that I would do X, Y, or Z. There's no way, whether it's, you know, tonight's been mentioned because of my raising, because of my salvation. Chase, there's no way I could do X, Y, or Z. We're getting ready to read in Psalms 14 in just a moment. Psalms 14 will kick off with, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I, I want to say this, sometimes that's looking, and Miss Kim, just help me. Sometimes we feel that's looking at, The fool has said in his heart, there's no Jesus, there's no Savior, there's no worthy. We're, we're not focusing so much on atheism or agnostic. I would love to say this, when we talk about fools saying there is no God, we're talking about there's folks that live like there's no one that has authority over their lives. I'd love to repeat that. There's folks that live like no one has authority over them. They are the end all be all. These are folks that believe in a Savior, believe they've been saved. You would be surprised the people that Jesus saved their soul, but he's not allowed to sit on the throne of their heart and on the throne of their mind and on the throne of their life. All right, let's look if we can. Psalms 14. If you have your Bible, don't worry for standing. Do not worry for standing. After we're here, we'll be in Proverbs 26. Psalms 14, Proverbs 26. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that does good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. You have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. 
Oh, that salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Look with me in Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. How many of you have ever sat back and wondered, I wish there was some scripture for that? Anybody ever said that talk? I have. Been studying in the book of Proverbs, and uh, I'll be honest, uh, I've sat under some strict preaching, but I've never sat under more strict preaching than the Bible. Amen. Amen. And I, I would love to give this title tonight. We won't be long. Um, not going to set a timer, but that's my hope. Uh, I would love to give this title, How to Forgive a Fool. How to Forgive a Fool. Proverbs 26, if you have your Bible. Please listen, be attentive as much as can. As snow in summer, as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly. Honor is not attractive for fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Answer not a fool. Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him. I, I would love to tell you what Proverbs 26 and 4 is saying. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him. That saying, this statement, ageless statement, don't lower yourself to a fool's level. Amen. Verse, verse 5, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own pride and his own conceit. Well, we've got a problem. Proverbs 26 and 4, answer not a fool according to his folly. Proverbs 26 and 5, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. What's that mean? If you lower yourself, you Christian, you spirit-filled, you Thursday night elite Christian, you lower yourself to a fool's folly, you have officially put that fool on a higher playing field. Because you, because you lowered yourself to, to and, and when I say fool, I, I, I want to help you just a little bit. The fool, the fool is fine having Jesus as their Savior, but not living for Jesus. Can you help me? The fool is fine having Jesus as their Savior, but not really worrying about what he or she says, what he or she does. The fool is fine having Jesus as their Savior and not really caring about how they treat people. Can anybody help me in the house? The fool, the fool is the person that doesn't care how his or her ways affect the lost people, how his or her ways affect those that need to gather back in church, those that need to gather back into the house of God. Well, Chase, the fool is unlearned. That's not true. When we're looking at the word foolish, you're thinking of the word ignorant. Ignorant means to be unlearned. Ignorance just needs to be taught. But I'm talking about those that, number one, refuse teaching, and number two, don't want teaching, and number three, believe they're already excellent. I remember a wise prophet said, stupid is, stupid does. Proverbs 26 and 6, he that sends a message by the hand of the fool cuts off the feet and drinks damage. There's an old saying that says this, and, I, and I'm trying, I'm working real hard, but there's, there's an old saying that says this, every best friend has a best friend. And here's what you need to be ready for. When you tell a fool something, when you tell someone dangerous something, when you give them a piece of your heart, when you give them a piece of trust, when you give them a piece of secrecy, when you know they're not worth or able to keep that, according to Proverbs 26 and 6, he that sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his feet and drinks damage. Basically meaning you've already set yourself up for failure. The legs of the lame 
are not equal, so is a parable of the mouth of fools. As he that binds a stone in a sling, so is he that gives honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hands of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God, I, I believe I need to back up just a touch. Amen. As a thorn goeth into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Can I ask you a quick question? Where's the most popular place that Christians will find parables? Bible. Isn't it amazing? And I, I, can I give you this? The first thing that we need to know, and I, I, I'm wanting to read 28 verses here, but I don't know if I'll make it. The first thing we need to know the word flesh starts with the letter F. The word fool starts with the letter F. Every last one of us have the ability to be a fool. <coughs> I believe sometimes one of the quickest ways of becoming a fool is believing you're not one. <coughs> believing I don't have the capability of being one. Well, Chase, I don't, I don't have the ability to do the ignorant things, the dumb things that other people do. Chase, I don't have the ability of letting my mouth get away from me. I don't have the ability of letting my feelings overtake me. I don't, I don't have the ability of watching words go out my mouth and going, Oh no, come back. <laughs> Can we all admit we've got that ability? A fool when it comes to the house of God, and you and I, we've seen them in the house of God. Every church has some. Chase, do we have any? Every church has some. I, but can I say this to you? If you and I aren't careful, if fools aren't careful, we will always, fools will always claim to one certain scripture or a couple of certain scriptures that always prove their innocence or justification. Is that true? In this offended age, woke, in this woke age that refuses to wake up, well, the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. God is my judge. Well, we got a problem there. I believe fools are very, and, and this will cover all of us. If there's a part of us that can be foolish, then I can be foolish in. We're very sharp concerning some things, but not sharp at all concerning others. A fool can look and judge not that you be not judged. God is my only judge. And then fail to go over to 1 Corinthians where Paul said, He that is spiritual judges all things. Look with me in verse number 10. Verse 11, I apologize. Yeah, let's do verse 10. Why? The great God that formed both that the great God that formed all things both rewards the fool and rewards the transgressors. I say this briefly. You Psalms 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God that committed abominable works. Basically saying this, and Romans, Romans 1 and 2, can we admit something real quick? To turn away God is foolish. Yes. To not just turn away God, but for God to keep begging and begging and wooing and wooing and pleading and pleading. And people soberly say no. Yeah, right. Foolish. But look at saved people for a minute. When saved people continuously say I'm saved, but refuse to line up with the word of God. 
refuse to repent, refuse to humble down, continue to live in their pride, continue to live in their arrogance. When, when there's people that will refuse, refuse repentance, refuse forgiveness, refuse the workings of God in their life. Foolish. When people that are so blessed refuse to see that, We died right there. It's fine. Romans 1 and 2 has a word for that. And it's offensive. Most missionary Baptists hate it. But it's in the book. It's a fool's way to skip over parts of the Bible just because we don't like it. Two words. Reprobate mind. To turn them up. I'm sorry. To turn them over and to give them up. Well, Chase, God will never give up on us. Be careful. Be careful. Well, Chase, God hates the sin, but he doesn't hate the sinner. Be careful. Be careful. You got proof for that? Absolutely I do. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Esau was not a type of sin. Esau is a human being. What do you mean? I believe I said this a few weeks ago here. Is it possible for God to hate the person we become? God will never stop loving his people. God will never stop loving people. But where will God give up? You refuse to listen to me. You refuse to give heed to me. You refuse to even entertain me while I beg you. I'll let you believe you're right, and when you get done with your foolish ways, do you have natural Bible for that? The prodigal son, when the boy left, did prodigal son's daddy grab his leg? Please don't go. Please don't go. You, 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 you want me to change this about me? I'll change this about me. You, you, you don't like your mama? I'll get rid of your mama. You, 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 you wish I was gone? I, I'll leave. You, I'll leave. You stay. I'll leave. And then he leaves. And then he begs and he begs. Or did prodigal son say, I'm leaving? And dad watched him go. When you get done with the pigs and slop, and guess what happened? When he got done with the pigs and slop, I have sinned and I'm no more worthy to be called my father's son. I will rise and go to my father and say, Father, I've sinned not only against you, but against heaven. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. And guess what daddy said? Yeah. My son that once was lost, now he is found. He once was blind, but now he can see. Yeah. Kill the fatted calf, get the rope, put the rope on it, put the ring on his finger. For this my son yeah. has come home. That is when the fool finds the faithful. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to let you know, and some of us have a hard time with this. I'd love to say all of us. Some of us have some fools that we flat out ain't gave up on. I'm letting you know here and now, there's a many of folk that you and I continue to pour into and God says take your hands off so I can put my hands on God you don't know how much I love them you don't know how much potential they have you don't know how much we need them and God says take your hands off Dakota hit something Sunday morning I adored it I adored it loved it he talked about praying for patience I don't know how many of y'all grew up with that saying, don't pray for patience. I got rebuked one time in church. I ain't going to say where because some of their people watch. 
I got rebuked in church. I, got, I, I prayed for patience. And the pastor got up and looked me eye to eye. And he said, I don't want to be near you when you pray for that. I was 15, 16 at the time. I repent it. <laughs> you know another thing we used to pray, that I don't know if y'all used to, Lord, whatever it takes. <clears throat> hey, can I be honest? There are times you and I have got so used to fools being fools. That's just who they are. We got so used to brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so coming to church once every couple months. Got so used to people being wishy-washy human beings. One little spark of worth something, the whole rest of the year is worthless. Why, Chase, you take a horse to the water, but you can't make her drink. You bunch of salt-free saints. Come on. Give that blessed horse some salt, and guess what it'll do? Anyway, let's look on if we can. As a dog, verse 11, as a dog returns to the vomit, so full returns to his folly. Seest thou, man, I want to echo right here, and this is for all of us. Chase Lay's pastorship can't change the pool. Well, I mean, I, I'm glad you think so good at me, but it? Josh Golden, Courtney, ain't near, ain't near. Good enough youth leaders change their fool out of their foolishness. Rob can't jar that electric guitar good enough to shake a fool out of folly. Anybody there? <coughs> Why, Chase, I'm lying to the world. Well, just because you and I are the lie of the world doesn't mean people won't quit chasing darkness. Ain't you glad? And I can list all the people off the top of my head that tried changing me when I was full and they failed. And I've apologized to them. But ain't you glad when people couldn't change us, God did. Amen. God still is. Seest thou a wise man in his own pride and his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. What's, what's the problem with this verse? And I feel like I'm doing so much more hammering on fools. I ain't even getting to forgive. We, we might too part. I don't know. But the fool, the lazy, the one that doesn't care. There's a lion in the way, a lion in the streets. You know what that's basically saying? A fool sees his or her loved ones walking toward a beehive. Oh no, go. Go. Somebody gonna do something? <coughs> There's a line in the street. Line. Well, Chase, okay, there's nothing you can do against the line. Do you remember what Jude said? Jude said this of some have compassion, making a difference. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. You and I are fools if people are destroying their life and we've not even attempted to help. But the fool, the commandment God has given all of us, make a difference. And the thing you need to try for also, pull out the fire. As the door turns upon the hinges, so does the sloth upon his bed. The sloth will hide his, hides his eye, hides his hand in his bosom. It grieves him to bring it again to his mouth. 
The sluggard is wiser in his own pride and his own conceit than seven men that can render a season. Hey, can I wish us good luck? Because this is what Proverbs 26 and 16 just did. I'd love to wish us good luck. Good luck figuring out why fools are fools. Anybody there? Good luck figuring out why ladies are lazy. How many of y'all have ever said, I believe I heard Miss Nina say this one time. How many of y'all have ever said, I just don't know why folks don't want to come to church. Can I wish you good luck? Good luck figuring that out. Well, I just don't know why they wouldn't want to bring their kids to church. Good luck. How, how are you going to figure something out when the people that are living it don't even know? I, I give you this, something that I've said to my kids at school, I'm sure Courtney, Hannah, whoever else, I'm sure you, I'm sure you said it to young kids. I asked the kid why they did something, why they did something bad. Why'd you do that? And I looked at them and I said this the other day, I said yesterday. Don't say why, because that's a rude answer. Or don't say I don't know, because that's a rude answer. You know why you did it. How you gonna figure out why somebody does something when they don't even know why? I just can't figure out what makes that person do the things they do. Well, guess what? They don't know either. They've been a fool so long, fooling is in their game. Fooling is in their dinner. D D N A dinner. What? You got the power to fool around in somebody's DNA and change them? I know one person that does, don't you? Let's get ready to finish if we can. Verse number 17. We're almost done tonight. He that passes by and meddleth with strife, belonging not to him, is like one that takes dogs, takes a dog by the ears. How many of y'all ever got bit by a dog? You up? Nah, I'm not talking about a little little bitty shih tzu. <laughs> I'm talking about something about a hunk you. Tommy, me and Tommy. You take those dogs, Tommy, that'll hunk you. And you grab it by the ears, Jessica. And you stretch those in. I got a one. Any idea what that dog's going to do? Dog. I, I, brown man takes the dog by the ears. Chop the bar. <laughs> look, look at this verse with me. He that passes by and meddles with a strife belonging not to him is like one that takes a dog by the ears. Can I give you a problem that a lot of us good-hearted people struggle with? We believe we can help everybody and everything. We're meant to help everybody and everything. Is anybody there? And then when we can't help everybody and everything, we get discouraged. Can I give you a spiritual example tonight? And I'm on verse 18. I got 10 to go. We're going to close. Sunday night, we were over at Lima. Love that place. Love the death. It's happened here. There's a, there's a fella about eight rows back. Lima's a big place. So eight rows is probably our four rows. And uh, a fella left way back, came up. A fella loves Jesus, lives Jesus. Came up, went to the fellow that he, 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 he knew needed to get him some get right, went up, hugged him, and asked him if he wanted to go pray. Boy, you could just feel all heaven just. And you know, I saw it. The man disengaged, and they were both crying, and he looked at him. And, and you know what I saw all over that man's face? Defeat. And they, they said, folks in this church, I, I, I use you for a testimony. 
I went to him after. Because I went to him after. And I said, don't you doubt it one bit. I said, God used you. He said, but he didn't want to go pray. I said, but now he knows there's one person that will go with him when he does decide to go. Yeah, right. Now he knows there's not just 300 people here that care about him. There's one person here that really, really cares about him. There's times God will point us into, God will point us into certain people's lives, certain people's situations, certain people's problems. Because there's a way he wants us to help. But then there's times that we look at God and we say, that's somebody I can help. That's a situation I can help. Can I give you one more? There's times situations are recommended to us. And because it was recommended to us, we feel we can help. But there are times God wants to see if we'll look at people and say, I can't. Do you have the Jesus sense? When Jesus says your plate can't handle anymore, do we have the Jesus sense to be like, God, you know my plate, you know my limit. Yeah. So is the man that deceives his neighbor and says, am I I in sport? Humans do what humans do. The fool, hey, you've been here an hour and two minutes. Forgive me for this statement on Thursday night. It's better on a Sunday morning. That covenant back there is a real thing. It just is. And a lot of that covenant is based out of this book. So when that covenant says be just in our dealings, there's Christians that could care less about cheating. Faithful in our engagements, there's Christians that could care less if they hold up and they're in the deal or not. Can anybody help me in the house? They're so-called Christians are fine with backbiting, fine with excessive drink, that are fine with pornography, that are fine with backbiting, that are fine with it. Y'all dying, but it's okay. There's churches that are fine with backbiting, fine with dishonesty, fine with gossip. And can I tell you what their name is? Okay, oh, get ready. He's going to name that one church down the road. Mm -hmm. Fools, Missionary Baptist Church. Where we all just sit back and know a mess load of gossip's going on, know a mess load of backbiting's going on, mess load, mess load of dishonesty's going on, and we all sit back and cheer it on while they testify and cheer it on while they shout and cheer it on while they sing. And boy, that, that liar gets up in the pulpit and he preaches. That hypocrite gets up in the pulpit and he preaches. That man that's a cheater, he's a cheat, gets up in the pulpit and he preaches. But my God, can you hear him? Ha! Can you hear him? Glory! Yeah, man, preacher! Bunch of fools. Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> well, that's right. As a madman, verse 18, as a madman who casts fire bands, arrows, and death. I, I would love to say this concerning that. care less who he or she hurts who he or she texts, who he or she calls, what they call them, what they say, what they do is that right? Yeah. could care less the damage it causes how many of you are, are in church today because of people that were alike to you watch this how many of you almost got out of church because of people that were fools? And yeah. mine and your life doesn't matter, it matters. It matters. Where no wood is, the fire goes out. So when there is no tell there, the strike cease. Amen. 
Best way, best way to give fire and help it grow is to give it oxygen. I say this in short because Jesus doesn't want to stay here long. Can I go Can I go four years in the past? Well, soon be, it's almost four years. We had masks. We wore masks here in the church when COVID hit. Well, if I said this three years ago, it sparked. <laughs> we wore masks a few years ago in the church, and there was people that go around the church. Say, well, this church doesn't do this, and that church, here's their COVID rules, and here's their COVID regulations. And you know what it did? It sparked a fire. Sure did. You all know what the best thing was for all of us to do? Because at the end of the day, me, the leadership, the church, you all, you all know what we did? We did not handle COVID perfectly. And God bless all of us if we feel like we did. Well, Chase, what, what's a problem that you had with COVID, how we handled COVID? I'll give you the problem, I feel like. Not just how Souls Harbor handled it, but how many churches handled it. Government says shut her down. Bible tells you and I to pray about everything. We didn't pray about it. We shut her down. You can ask Faith of many a time I came to her. And I said, we didn't even pray about it. But can I give you this? And I mean it so well. 2024, I'm so excited to get in it. Revival's coming less than a month. Got a lot of good things coming up. Big things coming up. Looking so forward to it. But there's one thing that makes me dread 2024. Anybody want to guess? Election. You gonna hit this on Sunday morning? Absolutely, be glad to. Why? Because it's a hot topic, and you don't know what people will do. Just like in the days of Samson of old, they'll put the fire bands, those arrows, Tommy, and they'll pull them back, shoot them. People will stand up in churches and make foolish comments, and guess what? It will do. It will cause damage. People will catch people in private and say things and cause damage. Well, I don't know how you can be a Christian and vote for this. I don't know how you can be a Christian and vote for that. Can I tell you why? Because some have never been taught the importance. And you and I walk around with Bibles like ball bats. It's getting quiet around here. Let's finish. What's the best thing to do with hot topics? What's the best thing to do with destructive topics? What's the best thing to do with those topics? Hey, can I ask you something? The first church split I ever went through, first church split I ever went through was in uh, February of 2002. And did you know there are people to this day that if you get them talking about it, Christy, oh my God, they'll act like it just happened two weeks ago. <laughs> I got to wonder how many dramatic things in mind in your life, dramatic people in mind in your life. How many of you, there's an evil part of you. <laughs> when a certain person gets brought up, oh. Certain people get brought up. Let me tell you about a fool. A certain dramatic situation comes up. And because you've got so many feelings inside. Let me tell you about it. But here's the question. In those moments when there's so many things that we are dying and so many people are dying to talk about, dying to expose, and this is to my conviction, in that moment, who's doing the damage? The fool? Or are you and I putting oxygen to the fire? 
that right? Burning lips, verse 23, burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver cross. He that hates the simplest with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. Can anybody finish this quote for me? If our gospel be hid, it is hid to those that are lost and blind. Can I, can I say this to you? And I mean it so, so well. There's times people that are wise need to make decisions for people that are fools. A fool can't see the damage that he or she is doing. So sometimes decisions have to be made. Is anybody there? When he speaks fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso digs a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolls a stone, it will return to him. A lying tongue hates those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. This is, I've read 28 verses. This is where I'm supposed to start. But I'm done. <clears throat> How many of you have favorite verses that people around you really don't understand why you hang so much on them? Hey. There's some folks, and I've heard the I've heard the harpings, and I get it. I do. Right now, I'm harping the harp out of Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Now the Spirit speaks. One, you know that because you know the book. Two, you know that because I wore this out. <laughs> Jeremiah seventeen nine. The heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And I'll be honest, some of that, how many of you would agree with this? We're closing, you got the word. How many of you would agree that sometimes the scriptures that are on our favorite list are really just on our favorite list because people take it so far out of context? <laughs> If there's something that, bug, that bugs me in church, it's just a personal thing. It's not, it shouldn't be an everybody thing. It's a personal thing. How many of y'all have ever been in church? I'm probably guilty up here. How many of y'all have ever been in church heard somebody say, just follow your heart? And I, I, that's probably why I'm bald, Scott, because I used to grab my hair and go, ah! Because the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And we're telling people from the blessed God pulpit, follow your heart. And then the Bible said that if the blind would leave the blind, they both fall in the ditch. So if I follow this thing that doesn't even know what it wants, and I can't see without Jesus, that's the blind leading the blind. So I'll be honest, that one's, that one's a little touchy because of that. <laughs> but can I give you this? There was a pastor... And some of you know this, some of you don't. Some of you are better off not knowing, just to be honest. There was a pastor that I was going over qualifications and I got to, must be the husband of one wife. And I talked to a pastor, sharply disagreed with me, that's fine. Everybody, hey, can you help me right here? Everybody can believe what they want to believe. Everybody can be wrong if they want to, too. Fact. He said, well, you keep quoting that the Spirit speaks expressly. So you're saying that if somebody just thinks they pastor, they pastor. If somebody just thinks they preach, they preach. No, sir, no, ma'am. Anybody there? Yeah. If I think I'm a car, that doesn't mean I turn into one. Yeah. Can I ask you, how many of you have sat in church and Felt, felt God's Holy Spirit. Anybody? Yeah. 
Now, did you just drum that up in your mind? Well, I think God did that. So since I think it, so shall it be. Did you think God was in it, or did God let you know he was in it? How many of you all have ever been outside church, don't care where? How many of y'all have ever been outside church and felt, felt, F-E-L-T, felt God's Holy Spirit? Now, as you drum that up, I think I'm having a Jesus moment. <laughs> so since I think it, so shall it be. Jesus, are you talking to me right now? I sure am. Boy, you sound an awful lot like me. I know, ain't that weird? At least I we feel like Jesus is talking to us and we talk to her blessed sound. We believe in the presence of God when it comes to the choir loft. Is that right? How many of y'all ever heard preach it? Boy, I feel God in that. Anybody ever? Well, did you drum that up? Was it just your style that you liked? What's this got to do with the message? I believe this with a firm affirmity. Don't know if that's a word, Jessica. Excuse me, but it is now. Sounds good. I believe this with a firm. If we believe we can feel God's Holy Spirit when it comes to singing, when it comes to preaching, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to our drive down the road, when it comes to our moments that we have Jesus moments, we also have to believe that God's Holy Spirit will lead us how to deal with fools. God's Holy Spirit leads us when to speak up, how to speak, why to speak, what tone to speak. God's Holy Spirit. I like this. How many of you would admit it ain't the speaking up part you got a problem with? It's that hushing up part you got a problem with. <laughs> I believe our church is full of both kinds, to be honest. Just Chase talk of the harbor. I believe our church, we, we, we've got a mess load of folk that wait until they're so full of whatever emotion, whether it's anger, whether it's whatever the case is, and they get so full, and then you speak out of the anger, and then you hate yourself because of the mess you made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we've got folk that need to say something, and I, need, I needed to say something a long time. Well, I'm just saying, folks, how many of you have ever been glad that God called your name? Boy, Tommy talked about being lost, being saved. Stand with me if you would. It'll help you close. Tommy talked about being lost, being saved. How many of you are thankful for the day that God called your name to be saved? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, boy, boy. Can't you go with me on this one too? How many times have you and I been a fool? And God said, Chase. Y'all don't agree that ain't none of y'all name Chase. How many of y'all got whooped with a U when you were a kid? Whooped. Do you know My Uncle Ben, some y'all know him, some y'all don't. He'll come up sometime. Uncle Ben was like a dad to me. He never laid a finger on me. He'd look at me and say, Chase. Lord God, might as well have took his belt off and us done circle dance. How many of y'all remember back in the day when parents, and some of y'all got that town, I've seen some of y'all just say your kid's name. Thank you, Jess. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say your kid's name. Give them a look. And the Holy Ghost go down the spine. <laughs> but how many of y'all have seen parents try to do the first name thing and that don't work? Try to do the hush thing, that don't work. Have to scream, have to yell just to get the job accomplished. You say you seen it? How many of y'all remember a time in your life, ready for some conviction? How many of y'all remember a time when God all he had to do was call your name? 
him speak and say, that's enough. The winds and the seas obey him, but we catch us some fool. The winds and the seas look at us, Kim, and say, if I was you, I'd quit while you're behind. And we say, no, sir, I believe I got a little bit left in me. God help us get back to the day that all he has to do is say our name. Yes. Ain't that something? Yeah. Ain't that something? Amen. I believe God knows what we need, don't you? That's 50 minutes worth. That, that's about 50 minutes of not going where I thought we was going, but I'm fine with it. Anybody got anything now? You preachers, how many have you guys ever preached something that's been a little bit too close to home that's been really easy just you get caught up in the flesh and just run? Hey, I ain't gonna lie, and I, I mean this how I'm saying it, I'm saying it how I mean it. They some people in my mind that are fools with a capital F. And you know what's real easy for me to do? Get up here and go on a rant. 30, 45 minute rant about their characteristics and how you and I should not be those things. Well, Chase, that'd be beneficial. Because we need to learn from that. Anything in the flesh, not just in this house, but out of this house, anything in the flesh is not beneficial. Got an office and usually Larry will come in, he's usually here first, and right now he's real worried about it. Because I'm getting here quite a bit early. And he'll come in, he'll look at me. You and Mama in the fight. <laughs> and usually I'll come on in and I'll sit around and joke a while. But tonight I was just, and he said, Well, I'm going to go do a walk around. Sound good. And don't they ask pray? And I mean this God, any moment that I start to get caught up in my mind, yank me out of the clouds. And either redirect me or hush me up. Just because you and I have productive rants doesn't mean they're productive. It, I'm looking forward to Sunday morning more than excited about it. My, my most favorite of the year outside of Easter. Love it. Looking forward to it. Uh, got some surprises coming Sunday. I found out about it. I'm looking forward to it. And some of y'all going to text me. Who's coming up? And guess what? I ain't telling you. <laughs> you promise? I promise. Because y'all gonna come in Sunday and be like, oh, look, go there. I'm gonna be like, told you so. <laughs> Even though I didn't. Anyway. <laughs> Looking forward to you too Sunday night. Can't wait. Next Sunday, we've got the folders coming. So I'm looking forward to all that. Amen. Been glad to be in church tonight, ain't you? Amen. Amen. Been worth the trip. Church, you ready? Lord, help. Can God. God bless you.